This is an example of how I might recreate some missing reference face on a curve. So you can't see perfectly, um, but the outside of this curve probably has maybe an inch and a half of flat reference face. And I'm going to be cutting most of that off because I'm going to be cutting a 45 degree cut on my primary reference face. So what I've done is I've set up my miter gauge with a zero clearance fence. Uh, and then I've created multiple points of contact. Uh, so I have this big beefy piece of MDF, squared MDF. Um, I have this block that was originally at 45 degrees, but then I cut it on my bandsaw to kind of match the curve that it was in contact with. And then I have about maybe a half inch to three quarters of an inch of flat reference face that will continue to be in contact with the fence after the rest of the reference face is cut away. Uh, so if you have a, a belt sander, uh, it's particularly nice to be able to make jigs like this on the fly. I don't have a belt sander yet, but I was able to cut pretty closely with my bandsaw and then ferret the rest of the way with a sanding block. Uh, and as I push this through my table saw reference, uh, I'm just going to be keeping an eye on my three contact points, particularly that like half inch of reference face right there. Uh, and this should work on both sides of this curve as well as my my identical curve that I'm also cutting. Uh, so it took me probably, I'd say at least 20 minutes to get this set up the way I liked it. Um, and I also experimented with a few other configurations to see if there was a better option for me. Um, but it's really worth taking the time to try to figure out what's the best way for this piece to be fully supported as it passes through a machine uh, because you don't want to realize halfway through your cut that your piece is putting you in a dangerous position. So this is another example where I'm cutting off almost all of my reference face um, on the face of my piece. I still have reference face in the form of my square edge on, on the edge of this curve. Uh, so my square edge is clamped up against my miter gauge, which is set at a 45 degree angle, just like the last cut. Um, I'm going to be cutting off almost all of this like five inches of reference face right here. So I'm not going to be relying on this for my setup at all. Um, and instead, I'm going to be pushing my piece flat, and then I'm going to be using my push stick to add a little bit of auxiliary pressure and support right at the point of the cut. Uh, and I have a quick grip attaching the piece to my miter gauge. Uh, part of the reason I use a quick grip is it's close proximity to the saw stop. I don't want to risk setting the saw stop off. And then also because it's really fast and easy to adjust. Uh, and then finally, I've set up a stop, a physical stop on my miter gauge. Uh, you can use this with a pre-made stop or you can improvise a stop with a piece of MDF or plywood. Both of them work just fine. Uh, and in fact, I might get a little bit more accuracy if I did use uh, a piece of MDF instead because then I wouldn't have a single point uh, stopping it. So I'm going to remove this stop here. Now my lamination has several points of contact. It has a point of contact up against this physical stop. It has a point of contact butted up against the fence and it has a very small point of contact on the machine bed. So I'm going to try to rely the least amount on the machine bed because I know I'll be cutting most of that away. So I cut a 45 degree angle on both ends of my U-shaped bend, uh, but because these will be mirrored pieces, I now have to set up the same cut uh, for the other side of my U-shaped bend. Uh, so it's a little bit unusual again because we, we don't have very much reference face, but what I did was I just spun my miter gauge around, set up the sacrificial fence again. Uh, and then I actually use my offcuts, which are 
identically sized because I had squared my pieces before using a physical stop. So using my off cut, I flushed it up with the end of my full-sized U-bend, uh, and then I lined it up with my zero clearance cut through my sacrificial fence. So in theory, I should be cutting exactly parallel to the other side, so I'm creating a mirrored cut. Uh, and it probably took me, I'd say maybe five to ten minutes to set this up. I had to think about it a little bit because I didn't want to over-design this jig. Um, jigs are, are meant to be quick and temporary and efficient. Uh, and when you make something that's more permanent, then it's called a fixture. So this would be considered a jig because it's making do with what I have without sinking too much time or effort into it. So I'll go and take those cuts now.